All right, peeps, you know what's up. You saw talent from the six. You know we had to get the, the, the rest of the world in, in the mix. The urban franchise, Tony Montana. Gonna sit back the desk for forgetting. So show you what they're about to tell you who they are. Let them promote what they got going on and show you guys how awesome they are. Because if they weren't awesome, they wouldn't be on the show. It is down to talk with Tony Montana, baby. We have the most and 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 we have the most. What is going on, peeps? I am the Urban Franchise Tony Montana, and this is another edition of Down to Talk with Tony Montana. And today, I have a guest who's usually on the other side of the cameras. My good buddy, Roddy Lander. Thanks for coming to the show, bro. Nice to meet you, brother. Thanks for having me here. I've, it's, it's been a while. I've been wanting to come and say hi to you. Glad we're finally getting around to it. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys don't know that winged Edo cha championship belt that I always carry around on my shoulder... This is the man right here I got it from. Made my childhood dream come true. <laughs> Get my dream belt. And if you guys see right here, Belts of the North is like literally the coolest Facebook group for any belt collector, any wrestling fan. Roddy's one of the admins. Yeah, about th two and a half, three years ago, I created a Facebook page because there's all, there's all these American belt group pages on Facebook. You can buy a belt from the States and have it shipped to Canada. No problem. It's going to cost you. But the Canadian community was pretty low, and I started to build people and build people, and now we've got a group of nearly 1,200 people, Canadians, who collect belts, buy, sell, trade, and it's just a fun hobby, something to do at home, you know, and uh, pass the time. At the time I did it, I didn't think it was going to amount to much, but sales started happening, trades, deals, and people get to know each other. We met each other a few times, and it's been, it's been great. It's yeah. been great. It's like real, they do giveaways, they do a lot of things. This is one of the most interactive Facebook groups I'm in, one of the most awesome ones. Now, on top of that, you're in the film industry. Why don't yeah. you tell the peeps a little bit about what you yeah. do? Yeah, so I work in the locations department, uh, scout slash assistant locations manager slash locations production assistant, kind of do a lot of the locations things. Uh, we look for locations to film in, we make deals with the owners, uh, we let them know when and where we want to film. Uh, we get permits. Um, we take care of any PDOs, like police officers that may have to shut the roads down. Anything that has to do with the location we're filming on, our department is there to make sure it all runs smoothly or as smooth as can possibly be because if you know how the film industry works, nothing runs smoothly ever. <laughs> and if it is, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get into that? Yeah, so uh, actually I was in between jobs one year. I used to work a lot of dead-end jobs, things that I wasn't entirely happy with. Uh, one buddy of mine once said, hey, you worked at a film catering company where they cook the food for the film members and they serve it to them. And he said, do you want to just take a shift? I need a guy. And I'm like, sure. It was a cash job, so I was willing to take it. I uh, got in, I watched how the crew worked, and I instantly fell in love with, with what I saw. Um, I got a couple of shifts because I got some phone numbers. Like I, I networked as soon as I got there. Yeah. Uh, just entry level jobs where you're pretty much sitting in your car, watching cones, making sure no one parks in these spots. And like I said, it's very entry level, very basic. Um, slowly uh, grew the ranks within the industry, asked the right questions, impressed the right people. Um, and here I am now working on big shows like uh, Star Trek, uh, Suits, um, Titans. Uh, Umbrella Academy, um, and I have a new project coming up. Uh, don't know if I'm allowed to disclose the name, but next week I have a new project I'm working on. And I'll be back at Star Trek again for season five in April, which will be super fun to be a part of again. Right on. So you hearing those names, a lot of people have dreamed to be on those. How long have you been in the industry? Not a long time at all. Some, some people have been in it for 20 years. I'm in my third year. Yeah. Very green, very fresh, but I'm very... Uh, much willing to learn every day I go into work I learn something new yeah. um, I plan to be within this industry for the rest of my life for sure yeah. see peeps three years if you go in you're assertive you're a go-getter opportunities will come your way and we were talking about before camera we started rolling this is one job you've never not wanted to go into work oh right? god no you have those horrible jobs that just do so much toll on your body you wake up in the morning you're like ah oh. Do I want to call in today? Yeah. Do I just want to, you know, stay home and play video games today? Like, no. Never once had this with this job. I get up sometimes at the most random times of the day. Sometimes we film at 1 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 8 at night. But whatever the case is, I don't wake up with a gripe. I just get my day started, do yeah. my thing. And at the end of production, to see it all come together, that's my payoff. Right you know on. what I mean? That's my payoff for sure. So where do you see yourself in the industry in the next 5, 10 years? Definitely so Huh, that's a good question. 
Um, I've had opportunities to go on to different departments, the grips department who hang the lights, who grip the cameras, who do the dolly for the um, the cameras. Yeah. That's a cool, that, that, that sounds cool to me and I want to dip my toes into that some way or another. But I'd like to stay in locations, either scouting full time mm-hmm. or managing full time. Um, I do understand it takes a while to get there, and I'm paying my dues right now. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm getting my feet dirty, um, I'm busting my back. Um, but I'd like to see myself either within the grips, like I said, who they take care of the lighting, the the electrical hanging, all that, yeah. or. Maybe one day I want to get my own thing off the ground. Um, I recently started writing my own little small th- scripts. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to know a really cool writer on my last show, um, and he inspired me to do a little bit of writing. Nice. And um, so I have a little a little thing in my computer that I've been Working. typing up here and there. So maybe one day I'll get that off the ground. I'll get my own production team started. Yeah. I'll get my own in- money invested, and I'll, yeah. and I'll start my own thing. Right. Uh, what genre are you writing in? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say it would be, it kind of addresses mental health um, and how it can be normalized, normalized, um, how people can go through mental health but still appear fine in front of the cameras. Um, And there's another side to it. So like I said, I don't know if anyone will read it. I don't know if it'll ever get off the ground, Mm -hmm. but it's it's, it's pretty realistic. It's pretty, it's pretty deep. Right on. Mental health is a serious issue nowadays. I feel anything coming yeah. out about that. There's a lot of people who they see that as like, oh my God, there's somebody else that understands. So. Absolutely. In my opinion, everybody goes through their own type of mental health in their own way, whether it be large or very minimal. Um, everybody goes through something. And um, I always encourage people, if you are, just to reach out. If you can, talk to somebody. It's not always easy, but... It's a it's a thing that does need to be addressed. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't we can't ignore it any longer. We've yeah, lost, absolutely. We've lost way too many cool people in the film industry, in the music industry, in the wrestling industry, yeah. um, and it needs to be addressed. And it needs to be something needs to happen. Yeah, no, I one hundred percent agree. Yeah, it's good to see that we're finally moving in that direction and is being normalized for people to actually express how they're feeling. It's like it gives you hope for the future. Absolutely, for sure. Uh, sometimes I think about the future, the people, like that I see online nowadays. Like, I don't know if I should reference people, but these island boys. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saw, I've heard, I've seen them recently. Are those the people that are going to be like big level people in the future? Like, well, is that what we have to look forward to? I, I, I'm just going to hope that guys like that, they have an audience and they stick to their audience. For sure. I just like, I don't want to see them in WWE anytime soon. There's but. an audience for everything. Yeah. Man. Everything and anything, someone will watch it. That is true. Yeah. That, oh, my God. YouTube has been the biggest prover of that. These pimple popper videos are, Ugh. like, crazy, crazy <laughs> popular. I was talking to a girl last night, and she was like, oh, you do YouTube? And she kept telling me all these pimple poppers. I was like, what? That's, really? It's like, it's like a car accident. You know you shouldn't look, yeah. but you're still looking, and it's like, why is that satisfying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, am I weird, or are they weird? What has been your best experience at a wrestling show? Oh, man. Uh, okay. So right before COVID hit, I think COVID may have been a thing. It was very early into COVID, and yeah. no one, there was no travel restrictions yet. Mm-hmm. Me and a couple of my buddies who were from this page, Belts of the North, that's a shameless plug, <laughs> um, follow us on Facebook. Um, we went to, where do we go, Rochester or somewhere like that, somewhere close by, and we got to see the NWO do a pretty cool, badass uh, entrance. Oh, nice. And I, seeing the NWO, actually, there's been a couple moments Okay, I'll maybe give you two. All right. So seeing the NWO was definitely one. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole, like, Wolfpack vibe, yeah. like, the Hollywood Hogan came out. Just oh, seeing nice. that was no, so, like, it brought me back. Yeah. Like, it w- me was back. it WrestleCade? No, this was a SmackDown. This was, like, oh, SmackDown. The SmackDown after they had just switched to Fox. Oh, nice. And they were, like, promoting it, promoting yeah. it, promoting it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, to see, I have videos on my phone of the NWO making their their cool entrance. My buddies and I are, like, giving each other the two sweets <laughs> and everything. <laughs> nice. uh, and my second best memory, actually, this might be first. I took my son to a wrestling show, and I had been asking him for a long time yeah. to come with me. My son's not really into wrestling, uh, but he knows I'm crazy about it. Yeah. He sees my belts and mm-hmm. whatever. So I've been asking him, like, you want to come to a show? He's like, yeah. no, not really my thing. Not really my thing. Yeah. Finally, one day, he agreed. I'll come to a show. Right on. Okay, cool. So we had tickets that were kind of not the best. Mm. 
me being the person I am, I scouted out some better seats with my eyes. Nice. I'm like, hey, no one's got those seats. Let's just go over there closer, and if yeah. someone kicks us out, we get kicked out. Yeah. They happened to be front row seats. Oh, nice. It was a live show. It wasn't yeah. televised. We got to see The Fiend mm -hmm. uh, in a cage match, which was pretty cool. But then at the end of the show, Roman Reigns had finished his match with, I think, Drew McIntyre. And Roman came over, and my son got to touch him and do the yeah. whole thing with him. And after that, my son became a wrestling fan. Oh, his nice. His face lit up. I have him on camera. Like, Dad, he touched me. He touched yeah. me. He got so excited, and it was just cool to see him. Like, this is how wrestling fans are created. You yeah. weren't a wrestling fan before, but then you go, you experience it. Yeah. The wrestler takes two seconds out of his day yeah. just to interact with the fans, mm -hmm. and that's all it takes. It's right like, on. Instant, my son glew up, and he always talks about it every time. Yeah. Remember that time Roman Reigns touched my <laughs> He's like, he jokes, like, I still haven't washed my hand. And he, oh, shit. <laughs> I can relate to that because my nieces weren't really the biggest wrestling fans, but I remember all of them taking them to their first souls, and they just, like, instantly got hooked after. Oh, yeah. It was like, till this day, my niece, my oldest niece is in love with Santana from Proud and oh, Powerful. Oh, nice. <laughs> She's like, is Santana on? I want to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you can watch it on TV and have your own opinion on it just like a baseball game or a hockey game or a basketball game, but when you go to the arena yeah. and you feel the energy of the crowd and you see the performers, it puts you in a different mind state and you're like, you know what, this is pretty cool. Oh, Even yeah. if I wasn't a fan before, I can appreciate what they're doing now. Who is the biggest stars or some of the biggest stars you've met working in, in, this, in the okay. industry? Okay, um, let's see, just recently Jason Momoa. He's oh, a, he's nice. A, he's, in, he's, in the, uh, he's been in town for a while working on C. Oh, right, huh? Uh, so I would see him daily. It was at the point where he'd friggin' wave at me out of his car. <laughs> I'm waving at him, and it's so surreal. It's like, Jason Momoa's waving at me oh, on a wow. regular basis. Like, um, just recently, Sonequa Martin-Green, who filmed in uh, the new Space Jam movie as LeBron James' wife. Yeah. She's uh, also on The Walking Dead um, and Star Trek Discovery. She's an incredible actress. Yeah. I tip my hat to her. She, the things that she can make happen in certain circumstances, amazing performer. Um, who else? Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. Um, very big name in the industry. A cool, if, if you're able to get a minute or two of his time, which yeah. doesn't come easy. Mm. Um, he's just a, a book of knowledge yeah. in terms of what happens in the film industry. Um, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Oh, Kevin right. Hart. Right. Yeah. There was a man from Toronto. Oh, was nice. Filmed here not too recently. Yeah. Um, he was pretty cool. Yeah. And a lot of up and comers as well, too. Um, a lot of up and comers that are, you will, you yeah. will start hearing about and noticing. Yeah. Um, the, um, the cast of Umbrella Academy, a bunch of young children that yeah. you're going to see them in the future. They're going to have bright careers ahead of them. Right on. Forgive me. I don't remember their names, but they're all incredible actors yeah. they're all going somewhere you will see them right up, up and coming in movies and blockbuster hits for sure i saw you posted a photo of manchester black from uh oh Super david Drunk. ajala yeah. my boy yeah. david david i hope you watch this if you are i miss you buddy i can't wait to see you uh yeah the star from supergirl david yeah. ajala uh, yeah. manchester black yeah probably the person that i created the closest bond with in terms of celebrities like oh, right he's on. super cool amazing guy um oh man what a cool guy to work with i told him my son was a fan yeah. of the supergirl show that he had done there mm -hmm. and he sent like a personal little cameo to my son on my phone oh he nice. grabbed my phone from my hand yeah and he's like taking pictures with me yeah. and he's like shouting at my son right and stuff on. like that and i'm like dude you're amazing man like you're just incredible <laughs> he took the time to get to know my name he took the time to get to know me as a person yeah. and just uh if i have to, my, my number one top Cool, coolest celebrity would be David Ajala, who yeah. played as Manchester Black. Right yeah. on, right on. He, he's awesome. It's he, cool to hear that like stars are actually awesome like that. There's there's a lot of them that are so grateful to be in the position that they're in. Yeah. There's a few of them that make it a little difficult to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to name names, but uh, the ones that do make it mm -hmm. uh, a good experience really make it a good experience. Nice. Like, for an actor to give my son a little message or yeah. something like that. It was just, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah, that's so pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. So you're telling me about some new technology that's coming out that's going to be replacing yeah. green screen. Yeah, so um, the typical way green screen works, we all have seen a green screen behind us. The, the production team will create an image behind, um, behind you, and green screen can create issues like... Um, 
you can you can see the reflections of green sometimes in people's outfits. Yeah. Um, notably, if you look in Captain America's shield, a lot yeah. of the times in the Marvel movies, yeah. you'll see a green glow, uh -huh. and that comes from the green screen. And the actors can't really interact with their surroundings. They're working mm -hmm. with a green screen and a few set pieces around them. You yeah. can't really get in the character as much as you'd like to. Yeah. So there's new technology on the rise, um, recently used in the Mandalorian franchise. Uh, it's called a, a 360 wall. It's basically um, an entire wall. It's an LED green screen. It's lit up. You have environment around you moving. You can control the the, the temperature, not the temperature, the color temperature. You can control movements, uh, weather, color. So it's really cool to see as the cameras are moving, um, the background image is moving with the cameras. So it almost looks like the actor is in a building, walking in a building, but really he's just walking in front of a million little LED lights that yeah. are all uh, displayed to look at, make it look like he is in front of the environment that he's in. So it's pretty cool. I've got um, a little sneak peek footage that I will share with my buddy here. Yeah. I can't show too much, but I will share a little sneak, maybe a little three second snip. Right on. Um, just to share the technology and how it's working. We did use it in Star Trek. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to see it. If you're not familiar, go look at The Mandalorian, the first season. First couple episodes, maybe the third one in. Um, there's a couple scenes where it's just super creative what they do with these lights and, <laughs> and how they trick you to believing that's where they actually are. Obviously, we're not filming in space. No one's going to space to yeah. film. Yeah. But you look, it looks like you're in space. Right you know what on. I mean? It's, it's the closest thing to space that you're going to get. Yeah. You get... Actors moving, the stars are moving behind them, the planets are moving behind them. It's made to look so real. It's actually really incredible. Oh, that, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's going to one day eliminate the job that I'm in, yeah. but I'll learn to adapt it. And I'll, because like I said, I'm on location. I'm looking for spots to film. The more and more they use these walls, yeah. it's mostly all in studio. Mm -hmm. So I won't be needed as much, uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll learn to adapt. Right, That's what right. I, I do. I adapt no matter what. I, I'm, I'm always the type of person to adapt to different circumstances and different changes. I'm all about adapting. Right on. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, yeah, Roddy. Thanks for having me, man. This has been awesome. Uh, it's been awesome having you here, yeah, bro. Buddy. <laughs> Guys, remember Belt of the North, go and follow it on Facebook, That's right. get interactive. They got their own champion belt right there Have are a you look. a gamer bro <sighs> not as much as i used to be yeah I, I love to game um i recently have been buying a bunch of more nintendo switch games nice. because i'm like working on location i'm waiting for something sometimes my game my hand yeah. i'm like fidgeting with my <laughs> switch but in terms of like first person shooter games all those things like that um, not so much as I used to. I like a good Mortal Kombat game. Okay, right on. You know what I mean? I can respect a good Mortal Kombat game, but uh, I just don't have the time I used to have anymore, and yeah. I wish I did. And um, I see what these guys are doing nowadays with gaming, Twitch, <laughs> and making money, and yeah. like yeah, making serious money with their yeah. with their accounts. I'm like, good for them, man. If you found a way to chill at home and do your own thing yeah. and game and make money, all the power to you. Right do on. it. <laughs> well, we got, uh, sir, you see my belt. This is the World Gaming Federation Damn. Championship. We have like a kayfabe funded like show that we're going to be coming out with later. If you want to be on the roster, you just come up with a WWE S character. <laughs> and then we do rock, paper, scissors. It could be a Mortal Kombat, whatever. I'm, I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. Right on. You, you know how to get a hold of me. It's the newest member of the roster. <laughs> I'm here, baby. I'm here to make some noise. Now, before we let you go, do you have anything that you want people to know about that you're promoting? Yeah, check out Belt of the North on Facebook. We're, we're a Canadian group. We're growing. We're expanding. We're happy to have members from other countries. It's awesome. Uh, check out Star Trek Discovery Season 4 if you haven't already. If you're not a Star Trek fan, this is something a little different that goes in a different direction. It focuses on characters who are primarily non-binary, who are black, who have color, um, who are gay. Um, they're open to different things that the usually Star Trek universe is not exposed to. So it's cool to see uh, new audiences uh, gather towards this franchise. If you haven't, check it out. It's not for everybody, but I definitely recommend giving it a, a try. Right on. It's an awesome show. I've checked it out. Thank you again. I've probably thanked you four times. <laughs> All right, we're going to get off camera, peeps. Stay good and keep it blitz.
the mix. The urban franchise, Tony Montana. Gonna sit back with Desperate for guests and show you, show you what they're about to tell you who they are. Let them promote what they got going on and show you guys how awesome they are. Cause if they weren't awesome, they wouldn't be on the show. It is down to talk with Tony Montana, baby. We have the most end, 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 we have the most end.